The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of Paltalk.com, AVM software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of PalTalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique subscribers. On demand on iTunes and YouTube and on Gary's blog, www.garybaumgarten.com, where you are invited to comment whether you agree with Gary or not, and I, I don't agree with Gary a lot. And thanks to our friends on CRN Digital Talk Radio, we are syndicated coast to coast across the United States with 12 million additional households. I'm your fill-in host. That's right. Gary's not here, unfortunately. He may pop up or he might, he might show up. He's looking for a location right now with his air card. But until he does, we're going to kick off the show. I'm your uh, fill-in host, uh, Boaz Frankel. I'm usually the uh, online production manager, but uh, we'll see what happens during the course of the show. And with a little help from Alan, our political analysis uh, from uh, Pal Talk, uh, we'll get you through this show and into the weekend. Well, folks, uh, let's kick off the show. Uh, first of all, I hope everybody had a good weekend, and we're finally here on Friday. I'll tell you what, I am uh, ecstatic about this upcoming weekend. Why? Because I'm getting my car out of the garage finally. Um, spent $1,000 on my car, and it better run after spending that much money. Anyway, enough with my own personal problems. Our special guest for this evening is Jamal Dajani. Jamal Dajani is the Middle East, uh, is the Middle East uh, uh, chief Middle East uh, for Link TV. Uh, he's very very knowledgeable in Middle Eastern uh, issues, and we're going to talk with him about the um, uh, the situation in uh, in in Lebanon, uh, where the uh, <clears throat> where recently the uh, the Hezbollah has uh, taken over uh, the. Um, uh, the uh, Western Beirut uh, neighborhoods. Uh, that's a big mess over there right now. But before we get into that, we're going to start off with uh, the rights of Afghani women, of uh, women in Afghanistan. Have the rights in the, in, uh, of women in Afghanistan changed since the uh, uh, since the uh, ousting of the uh, uh, of of the Soviets and beyond that? Well, the answer to that will come from uh, our guest, uh, Mr. Jamal uh, Dajani. Uh, Mr. J uh, Dajani, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Welcome to News Talk Online here on PalTalk.com. And let's see and if we let's got see if we got if we have him now. Are you there? I'm online. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, there you go. Okay, now we hear you, Mr. Dajani. Great. Well, Mr. D Dajani, we're going to kick off the show first with um, with the situation with Afghani women. Now, uh, this is an area of the world where uh, the where Afghani women, Afghanistan women in Afghanistan, have been. Uh, well, I mean, we're talking about an ancient culture where women have been uh, oppressed according to uh, old customs uh, that uh, really, uh, you know, the old customs that uh, we see in the Middle East apply very much to Afghanistan. Has that situation changed at all since the uh, ousting of the, um, uh, of, the, uh, 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 of the Soviets six and seven years ago and up till today, Persian Gulf War II? Has anything changed with the rights of women in Afghanistan? Well, I think uh, what you, you meant to say is the outsing of the Taliban, because this is, uh, it was the regime where the, uh, press, yeah, where the women faced uh, the most oppression uh, under. Uh, and this is, these are the images that we got used to seeing on television with women uh, being beaten, uh, women wearing burqas, and, um, of course, uh, with the fall of the Taliban six years ago, this heralded new rights for Afghan women, or at least this is what we expected, that there will be no more beatings, no more repression, and no more uh, mandatory, mandatory burqas. But, um, uh, but the, the worst thing that happened to the Afghan women is that their situation, their health situation, has not improved at all. If anything, it has deteriorated 
since the invasion of Afghanistan. And, and these are based on figures from UNICEF uh, that you have today more than 1,600 Afghan women die in child, childbirth. This is 100,000, um, this, this is 100,000, uh, um, more than 100,000 live births, you know, in some, and in some remote areas the death rate is even higher, which is 6,500. So in, in, to take this into perspective and compare it to developing countries, 450 uh, deaths that you have um, in, in developed country, which is uh, nine, nine, the number is nine out of uh, 100,000. So, so the statistics explain, you know, why Afghanistan is considered the, the most dangerous place on earth for women. And I'm just giving one example about childbirth. But then you have other things. For example, many of the women outside Kabul, I mean, you know, if you watch television once in a while, we get reports from Kabul. Yes, you might see Afghani women freer, and, and they have, many of them have joined the workforce. But in the rural areas where the government has no control and the Taliban still control these areas or, or, or the tribes control these areas, uh, many of the women are, for example, put in, in, into almost like a slave uh, workforce to work in the poppy fields, collecting, you know, the poppy, field, uh, poppy to make opium, uh, working long hours. This, this almost sounds like, uh, like China, where they have whole families working uh, in factories, feeding them a handful of rice to make a, a VHS cassettes. Absolutely, and, and these, these women... And, and many of them bring their children with them, you know, to these uh, uh, drug growers or drug dealer uh, 